and welcome to Action Teacher Video. Video is a powerful tool that teachers are using to reflect on their own practice and in this series we feature videos produced in schools and discuss the contents and implications here in the studio. In this programme we'll be talking about a whole school approach to English, music and drama in Jubilee Primary School and looking at their video called The World Was All Before Them. I'm delighted to be joined in the studio by Nick Cannon from Jubilee Primary School. Nick, hello Hi. and welcome to the programme. Joining Nick is another teacher with some similar experiences and concerns from Galleons Primary School, Patrick O'Neill. Hello. I'm also pleased to introduce education consultant Adrian Jones. Hello and thanks for joining us, Adrian. Firstly, I wonder, Nick, if you could tell me a bit about the aims and background to your project. We're a very close-knit community, but we wanted to get a whole different set of parents into the school and find out about what their lives were like and how they'd come to Hackney which is where the school is. We're a very diverse group of people and about 60% of the children have English as a, an additional language and we wanted to find out more about them and to make them more of our community. So we, we wanted to do it through music and drama and uh, performing. So we set about creating the opera. We're creating a, a school opera based on the lives of our school community. The Opera Project, it's about journeys, how people move from loads of different countries to make themselves settled in Hackney. Through the stories that the parents and the children have told, we've had a libretto which has been written, and uh, it's just a, a whole idea of celebrating the community that is our school. Last year we asked parents about their journeys from here to there and we asked children as well. And I saw a notice on the board inviting parents who were born outside the UK to come and tell their story of what their life was like in the country of their birth and the circumstances surrounding their coming to the UK. So I went along and told my own story. It's when the um, war broke out in Nigeria. Um, my family had to be moved to Cameroon. So we've sailed over from, from Nigeria to Cameroon on a ship. The other story is coming here to England to join my dad, which is the story mm. you're doing today. Can't say that I remember much of it apart from my dress, which this whole story is based on. My grandmother made the dress. It was specially made for the journey. And as I say, you know, the family was very poor, so having a new dress was uh, an exciting thing. We are a firm believer at the school that the arts give depth to our children's lives. And it is one of our main school aims, that all children take part in the creative arts in the school. But it, it's a new way of working and, uh, and it's a whole learning process and we're just working through it. But it, there is a lot of excitement about the opera at the moment. A whole big section of the opera is about one of the children who was born on an aeroplane coming here. My mum was travelling her first time to England on a plane. It was New Year's Day and she started getting pains and luckily there were doctors who were going to England as well so and then I was born. The curriculum that we teach needs to reflect the makeup of the school so we we go out of our way to make sure that we make it relevant and that we draw from the children and the families their experiences. I think we're a very tight-knit community anyway, but it's bringing different age groups together. Our design team, for instance, has got children from year two right the way through to year six. The design team is a group of people from different years and different classes which do the main work and we do little sketches of people and things like that to go with the themes. Everyone in the school's done a mask, a funny mask. At the end, there's gonna be kind of like a carnival and there are gonna be some masks hung up and some of the people are gonna hold them up. We're working on gridding up from the small paintings and drawings that the design team have done uh, into huge flats. That's my train, the outline of it. They didn't do it properly. This bit, then I exactly the same way I did, all the mistakes I did. 
everybody's got a CD with the, all the music on it, which all the children have heard. All the children have read the opera. They know it inside out and back to front. And people are using it in English lessons, in poetry lessons as an example of modern poetry. Everybody's writing an opera diary about how they feel and how they're involved with it. People are excited. And they, they definitely have their, their own favourite parts. We travel by shadows, we shudder from light. Our feet torn and bleeding, we tramp through the night. All that we possess is clutched tight in our hand. We're hated, we're strangers in our own homeland. In our own home. This family, they, they were from Cyprus and they were going to move to England. They wanted to take something to remember the house. The boy said, why don't we take the key? They went to England and saw their new house. They tried the key that was for the house and it didn't work. And the boy tried the key to his old house and it opened the door. The puppets have turned out really good. Even though the design team just made rough sketches, they've turned out kind of exactly the same. Like the one I made has turned out really good. They've even got the exact material I wanted. I think there are a number of, of benefits. The first one is it um, offers the children something outside of their own family. They can learn about their classmates, their families, how they came into the country, like my own story. So it opens them up to that. And also it helps them to develop their, their talent it helps them to develop their voices. As I said, watching them earlier on, seeing them acting, and there's really into it, the dancing, the singing, the movement, and it, will, it helps them in that. So um, these type of projects are very, very useful. That the children have so readily grasped and are enjoying the opera, because that's the way we want to go. We want to, to teach everything through the arts or as much of it as we can, and through creativity. And, uh, and using more partnerships like this and, and longer projects that the whole school is involved in. You said in the video that it was a new way of working. What, what do you think are the advantages of working on a project like in this way? Before, we were really aware, I mean, on a really basic level, when children learn about commas and full stops and capital letters, they'll learn about them and they'll do them in English. They won't transfer those skills over into science, I mean, and that's on a very simplistic level. But with the skills that they were learning and the, the way they were learning on a much more holistic topic approach, they could apply those skills right the way across and, and take the meaning that they, that they had and apply it to all different areas of the curriculum. You used opera, and you used opera to pull in all the other types of arts, music, drama, Art. I don't think it matters that it's opera or whether it's a piece of art or whether it's a, you know, a game or a book or whatever it might be. But it's got to stimulate the children as your starting point or your entry point. You can bring everything into that. And the community were excited as well. I'm interested in that. The community were, were really fascinated by the whole thing and, and it brought in a whole load of new parents into the school, which was lovely to see. Um, and, and they really wanted to get involved. We had one parent who was talking to us and telling her story, and she said, oh, hang on a minute, and she dashed off home and came back in full national dress and was saying, you know, I f now feel comfortable, I can wear this, and I really want to explain about where I've come from. And it, it just made us feel really good about what we were doing and that we were doing was right, and that we were just opening up the school and really finding out about the, the people that make up our, our community. My mum was travelling her first time to England on a plane. It was New Year's Day and she started getting pains. And luckily there were doctors who were going to England as well. So, and then I was born. Patrick, I want to bring you in here. What did you think of this project? It's really interesting for the children. Um, both our boroughs, um, Newham for myself and Hackney for where Nick works, um, is, is, is a large EAL proportion. So um, there's over 50% of children with English not as a first language. 
And when you're teaching through the arts, this puts everybody on a level playing field. It's not about how good you are at speaking or how good you are at writing. It becomes about how good you are at the arts. And as I say, this, this incorporates everybody. The responses from the children seemed really enthusiastic. But overall, how would something like this relate to the Every Child Matters agenda? Well, I think it's very important. It's something that we really want to concentrate on school now is the individual learning approach, but also the, uh, the bringing in the community, making the community part of the school and making them feel at home in the school. And although doing an opera like this is something that will take that could take an awful lot of money, there is no reason why any school can't get the parents in, get them involved, find out their stories and use those stories in a storytelling way or as a poetry way or anything like that to bring in that community and to make people not be afraid of school. What kind of skills do you think, or what kind of qualities, do you think it's important to develop in children? We do a lot of things with multiple intelligences and preferred learning styles where the children learn and then produce the piece of work in whichever way they work best. So they could be learning about the Victorians or whatever and then create a dance at the end of it or um, a model or a portrait or a story or a poem or a mathematical problem, whatever it may be. And that is giving the children the chance to express themselves much more freely. And, and I think that really helped to do the opera as a, as a step towards what we're now doing. We're working on gridding up from the small paintings and drawings that the design team have done uh, into huge flats. That's my train, the outline of it. They didn't do it properly. This bit, they're like, exactly the same way I did, all the mistakes I did. Patrick, I'm interested in what you think about the use of video and how it lends itself to sharing with other members of staff what's been done in schools? I think it's great. Um, first and foremost, it gives children a chance to, to have a memory, a record of what they've done and what they've achieved. We've done a lot of videoing um, of, uh, and recording of, of events in our school, um, which is shown not only to the children and the teachers, but also we have sort of open evenings where parents are invited along to come and also em embrace and enjoy and see what their children have been doing. Um, they go home with a much more um, impressive knowledge and understanding of what we're trying to do in our in our respective schools. So video is a, is a fantastic tool for that. Nick, how do you think that a, there can be assessment of creativity? I don't know whether it's possible to assess creativity, but certainly it's possible to assess whether if the children's writing improves because of the fact that they've been creative and they've been allowed time to, to, to play, if you want, and to explore things, writing can be assessed. And so that's the way we're looking to see whether it actually has made an impact. It, it's just vital for us that our children uh, go out into the world as confident, happy learners. Well, I think that's a good point to end on, and I'm sure there'll be lots more discussion. You can, of course, find out more from our website at teachers.tv. Thank you to our guest Nick Cannon, Patrick O'Neill, and of course thanks to Adrian Jones. Please join us again on Action Teacher Video, and in the meantime from me, Xanthi Steen, goodbye.